Hello and welcome to the I3 lecture series hosted by the Masters in Digital Photography program at the School of Visual Arts. We are thrilled to welcome photographer and book publisher Victor Sira as tonight's guest speaker. Originally from Venezuela, Victor is currently based in New York City. He has been the recipient of numerous fellowships, including the Guggenheim Foundation, the Andrea Frank Foundation, and the New York Foundation for the Arts. Victor is a faculty member at the ICP Bard MFA program in Advanced Photographic Studies, where he teaches the course, the book, Imaginary Studio, a nonstop process. In 2011, he co-founded Book Dummy Press, BDP, which will be the subject of his talk tonight, a publishing company, studio, and bookstore that specializes in artist publications. So please help me welcome Victor Sira to our lecture series. Thank you, uh, thank you Jaime, for, for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here at SVA uh, to do this uh, small presentation. Um, in, it's a presentation, in a way, of a second act of my life. You know, it's, um, uh, by 2006, 2007, I have pretty much achieved uh, all the things uh, I had set up to achieve. So you realize my, my ambitions weren't too high. <laughs> uh, I came from Venezuela back in 1989 as an immigrant, as many immigrants. And so it, it took like 20 years to, of work, of photography work, or try to understand uh, New York. And, you know, sometimes you think that achieving the goals that you set up for yourself will be a happy moment but it could be very empty. And you realize that when you lose what is driving you, uh, all of a sudden you had no reason to, to photograph or to do anything. So it, enjoy it while you are in the process. Uh, because when you achieve it, it's really, there is nothing there. You know, it's just uh, you. So in that sense, tonight I'm going to talk, and I'm the co-founder. My partner, Shori Kawasaki, is the other voice. And, and that's when she entered my life. And before we started, I, I started this, this moment back in 2007, 2008, I had no idea that by mere effort, a sheer effort of doing something, uh, my life was going to change again. Um, I was, you know, I was going to meet the woman I was going to marry. Uh, I was going to create a new body of work together with her. And we were going to explore a question uh, we was about the book, the photo book at that moment. So I'm going to start the year 2000. And I'm going to go a little bit of the history. And I will, I will be quick. So in 2000, a book is published by Horacio Fernandez. There is a small exhibition in the Reina Sofia, Photography in Print, or Fotografia Publica. The thing about this book was that before this book, there were catalogs about photo books, there were lists of photo books, but none of the books have been well photographed, visually represented as an object, as it was in this book. And I remember stumbling this book exactly. In, I've been making books already for 10 years, but they were more like a portfolio. But I, when I stumbled with this book, I had a visual reference of masterpieces that done in 1930, 19. 20s, 1930. So it was amazing to see the object itself. So that, that started a process in which we were now be able to look at these books, you know, had, and so you, you created a desire for these objects. The second book was published by Andrew Roth. It's different. He's, he's a book dealer. So he published these very luxurious catalogs with essays by Vincent Aletti, your own David Levi Strauss, you know, they, they wrote about the photo book, what was the conditions of a photo book to be considered a masterpiece of a beautiful book. And that's still, you know, a small group of people. And again, the books were photographed, scanned beautifully, so you were able to look at these objects. Then it comes the fairway, <coughs> which is, and I'm, so I'm trying to bring you to the moment when BDP was born, because we are born in the, in, the, in, a, in the second way of the photo book. And, you know, comes, Martin Parr, together with Phidon, Gary Vajer, and they published the photo book, A History, Volume 1. So that's, you know, a 
probably at 10,000 copies of books, and that's when it hits the mainstream. Everybody has that book. The other books already have disappeared. They're very expensive. We talk about 2004, 2006, and it's this you know, great excitement about photo books. So that's the first period, and, and, and as you can see, it is the book that promotes the book. It's the media that is bringing the message itself. So it's visually. But still, 2004, 2006, photographic galleries are doing great. Photography is, uh, is, is valuable, uh, it's considered valuable for the collectors, for people. There is still jobs on the press. There's still people be able to do, to work with photography. But what is growing parallel is the digital environment. So by the time we hit 2008, the conditions, you know, it's a moment of chaos. It's, a, it's the moment when the economic crash of 2008 happens. The internet is getting faster. Digital photography is getting faster. Things, technology is advancing. And so those things come, you know, the galleries begins to close, that nobody's buying, you know, for, uh, in, in those high prices photographed. And there is a moment of opening. I'm very lucky. So at the library of the ICP, the director at that moment, uh, Deidre Donahue, asked me, do you want to curate a show about book dummies? The reason she asked that is because I've been doing book dummies in 1992. That was my way to apply for grants, to apply for, uh, for the Guggenheim, to apply. I, 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 for some reason in my mind, doing prints was too expensive and it took, took too much time consuming to be able to do it. So I have, at that point, 60 book dummies. So she asked me, do you want to curate a show? So the opportunity even grow because the crash, because the economic crisis created in the institution this feeling, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So do whatever you want. So it was great. Um, so, you know, so I set up to investigate that. Oh, oh wow, somebody is responding to something that I, I thought it was a byproduct of me doing documentary photography. So I open the closet, look at these books, and the question I ask, why when a photographer showed me their book dummy, it was so appealing, it was so attractive, and when, when it was took by a publisher, it lost all that. Why? What, what, what happened in that translation? What it was lost in that translation between uh, the maquette, the dummy, and the final product? So that was the idea of the show. Deidre gave me all the support. I was able to ask to bring uh, two, uh, two photographers from outside at ICP. The rules of the school gallery was it had to be connected to ICP. I was managed to, to bring people from outside. I showed the different iterations of the dummies. You know, at that moment, we put video screen to be able to see some of the dummies on the wall. This is Yuichi Hibi's work. And all of them were different. All of them have published. And the answer was very simple. The answer of the show was it's just the photographer who lost, the, the, they give their dummy away, lost control, and couldn't speak the language of the printer and the publisher. So that's what it was lost in between. It was the communication, but it was something rough. It was something intense about the maquette. That, you know, this is Lila there. He was just about to graduate at Columbia University. He was at that point represented by a, by a big gallery. His work was worth, uh, you know, people were paying money for his work, but even without insurance, he wanted to be on the show. It was an idea, the idea that we were being, be able to show somebody's process plus the print. And all this is because the environment we were, remember, I don't know if people remember, but you know, the economy was down, it was the end. And so, you know, do whatever you want. So we were able to do this. This is some of my work. But the piece I wanted to put on the show, most of anything, was a cutting bar that I've been using during those years. It was 20, 20 years of doing books. So I wanted to put that piece where it was the traces of that effort. And you know, I, it's, it's a body of work. I, it just for sheer effort doing photography, applying for grants. Uh, it was a period that you know, I got a grant every two years. And it's just a sheer belief because I needed the money to be able to, to work and to survive. Out of that came out, you know, I never had teach before, but out of that show, it came out the opportunity of teaching. They'd say, oh, we like this. You know, do you want to teach? So I, 
you know, I start, I did what I used to do with friends. I showed them how to, I used to do my dummies, you know, how do I work with books. But at the same time, I said, well, you know what? I don't really don't know. I don't know what a book is. You know, I've been doing all these books all this year, but, um, you know, so the class allows me to, to ask a question. What is a book? What was the whole thing about the book? I, I, so I wanted to understand uh, what a book was. Now, you see, what, what the hell is that picture? It's, it's, so this is a guy who had the same ideas of Martin Luther, you know, about the reforms, about the Catholic Church, but he got burned and got killed. So what is the difference? Why Martin Luther survived? And Martin Luther survived because the printing press had been around already for 60 years. When he puts his uh, 95 thesis on the, on the door of the cathedral, of the church, somebody took it, translated it to German, and printed it, and went out in the local language. By the time Rome wanted to do something, his supporters had grown, had a number of his enemy. He had, he had won people in his side. So it was very difficult to get rid of, of him. So the thing I understood about the book was that it was a great way, it's still an old technology, but it's still a great technology to get your ideas out. And so that was the premise of my class. It wasn't about making a beautiful object, but it was about creating a little machine that will take your ideas and find a place, find uh, a port where to arrive. That led me to understand what was happening with the internet. What, what is the connection? So I, through my class, I was making all these connections, all this, all right, so let, what is the internet does as a mean of communication? It was getting faster. And what it did, in the essence, is that you could connect your videos, your photos, I mean, everybody knows that by now. Your books all communicate with each other. You could orchestrate all these things and create a storytelling. And the book was one part, was the physical part of all this ecosystem. I, and you have to think at this moment, there were no many books from Latin America in the library. So we knew there was a book coming of Latin American photography books. It was still seven months, eight months away. So we took the event and so they asked me, can you put something together, go to Venezuela and do a research about Venezuelan photo books. And this is the publication, so I, I did it in newsprint, so it could travel fast, I could, you know, I could distribute it, it was cheap, I could give it away. I want the idea of come out. And so I went to Venezuela and I, you know, I bought, this is, uh, the book on the right is Retromundo by Paolo Gasparini. I bought that book for, you know, very low price. Uh, the book now costs $2,000, $3,000. So I, w I was able to take the books and, f and put a collection that the library bought. That was very important because, you know, all the years I studied there, I couldn't, I didn't know even the history of photography of Venezuela. I didn't have the materials or the visual materials. So there was a way to put it together. So it was basically very small on the left. You can see a small exhibition of the work. So this set up a, um, a practice, which is you do research, you, f you do your findings, you do a publication, and you spread culture. And, and I think I, I can say that with me and my partner, Shuri, we, that's what we enjoy the most of being uh, BDP. At the same time, at that period, um, and you know, this is to say we came to the book in different directions. The same period, we start collaborating with the ABC Artists Book Cooperative. And the technology of print on demand was growing too. How to print your book, you know, there is a, the traditional way you needed to print a lot of books, a thousand books, 500 books to be able to, do it, to be economical feasible. The new technology, the digital printer, the price was the same whether you print one book, 50 books, 100 books. So I joined this group of, uh, founded by Jochen Smith, a German artist, uh, which the sole purpose was to do books on print on demand and is to do artist book. And so that was another area of explorations. We did a show together with them at uh, Printed Matter, and it was all books done in Blurt, Lulu, or any other print-on-demand uh, platform out there. And, and the idea, you know, at that moment was a peak exploration, appropriation of images on internet, using images from satellites, Google. So all these books came out, a couple of artists came out, so 
For two years, I worked with them. We, we presented these ideas at the Printed Matter. And that was another collaboration that defined also the characteristic of Udemy Press. Six years ago, again, technology ago, we launched our bookstore online. We are able to use the, through the phone, be able to sell some books, very few books, and we clean a closet. And that's where we started to, to work, you know, to try to be, what was to have a store? What is the experience of having a space? And, you know, again, that was a, it's still a research going on. What it means to have a, a retail store? What it means to have a cultural space? We haven't solved that yet, but we, we're having, you know, a great fun uh, <laughs> doing that. Um, again, this is another poster. We went to Japan, we're sure it's from, and we wanted to learn how paper, Japanese paper, and what the Japanese book got made. The photographs are by Shiori, and then we make, make a selection of Japanese photo book. This project, again, we presented at the ICP library. We selected books from Japan, we selected paper, people were, again, a cultural project, we mix it with, you know, we, we do the research, we do the publication, even it's a small poster, just to get the information out, and then we do an, a, an, a small event. You know, people came, and um, at that moment was being born a project that they already had done 1010. The idea was they took 10 critics, and each 10 critics choose 10 books. So they did uh, the Japanese photo books, and you know, they were starting, so we decided to collaborate together, and they asked us to create a new logo, a new identity for them. We never done that. They asked us to design their catalog. We never done that too. You know, that was, you know, we, we'd never have worked with this quantity of books, but we, we jump on it. And by the way, you have to think about this moment in time. It, I was thinking, what was the difference of that moment with now? And we're going to talk about that later. Is there was an exciting moment, and it's almost it was a punk moment, in which you could take a guitar, you, took, you, you make it a bang, and you just went in and played. Nobody cared whether you played well or, you, or, you, or you, you didn't know how to play. Even if you put a, something, a book with a staples, and you were a genius. You're just like, wow, you know, you, you, you got an exhibition, your book go around. So that was that moment. That was a moment in which it was exciting to self-publish. So the idea for the logo of 1010, we decide, well, it's, they, do have, they do something that's very important because even technology has grown. Even though we know about books, distribution is still a problem. The object itself, to look at the object is still a problem. So what they do is they, they they exhibit these books. After they do the selection, they create spaces and people can go see their books. So we decide to make a, a logo that looks more like a, like a stamp, something that travels. And so this is the final, which is the cover, designed by Shiori. And you know, the first catalog, now they had done Japanese photo books, they had done Latin American photo books. I mean, they had, uh, now they're working uh, one in women's uh, photography books. Um, but this is the first one and, and we, kind of wanted to brand them uh, to, so people get to know them, so we s published this together with them. This is Song of the Spread, so the book, uh, the book is sold out. And also, in, our ter in terms of editing, we wanted this book to capture that moment when people were making zines, they were making different publications, and this is about American publications. So you have people like Alex Soss selecting, uh, David Solo, people from different areas, collector, Lila there, different people writing essays on this work. The first part is just a regular catalog, and when you get to the middle, it's black and white. Also, the other thing this catalog includes is the bloggers. At that moment, you could send a book to a blogger, and that could mean that the book would sold out. That's how much power a blogger used to have, and, and they will write a, a review about it. And so the middle is about bloggers, about all these bloggers that were, and so we wanted to capture this moment, because we knew technology will continue evolving, and things will be changing. So here, for example, just put your name here and do it yourself. So it was that feeling because there was no money. There was no idea of entering a gallery at that time. The, the economy has tanked. You know, so this is part of the catalog too. Uh, Marsha McLuhan's uh, The Media is the Massage. Uh, it was part of the inspiration. The internet is at the center of the spread. Yeah, you know, the, the eyes and extension, you know, the extension of the eyes. and all this self-reference to technology and book. Two technologies, one that is still very effective and, and this new one, and, but it's not the king anymore, it's not the sole technology. This is how the catalog, the catalog was translated in Japanese and English and, it, you know. After that, Shiori uh, decided to publish a book and she took a, 
a, a jump, this is like a, 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 a hundred copies and we using digital technology. So that's, you know, we, we're now printing 100 copies, so which it was a big for us. Uh, this is a fan scene dedicated to the fans of Pong Rocks. So it's the camera is directed to the fan, uh, not to the, to, to the singers and to the concert going. So that's an one publication we did. Then we start working with Andreas Stern, uh, the Ron Road Trip. The, again, this is a print on demand. I think we did it with, uh, she printed with Conveyor. Um, uh, she edited, so we worked together with her, with her and, and we started this collaboration and it was about this trip she took with these two French photographers when, when she was at school. Uh, also, we went to school to ICP the same years, but we connected years later. And it's this r trip that wasn't her trip, but it was, you know, and, 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 but she had photographs and she edited and, and it was about Morton and Antoine and, and her taking this trip. And I don't know if anybody knows uh, Antoine Dagat and, and Morton, uh, but they, you know, they are well-established photographers, and they did a lot of their signature work on this trip. <coughs> this is Andrea's work. So it's just a little book. It did very well at the New York Book Fair. I think she shared the table with uh, with Morton, and you know, she almost sold out. I was looking at this layout the other day. Beautiful layout. Then we worked with her again, and. Uh, this time we were using, uh, this is 500 copy, we wanted to make this little catalog just to begin. And you know, the idea is, uh, for us was, uh, uh, it's like making a film for us and making a book, it was to make these short films first, before you jump to make uh, something more uh, complicated, more larger. This is a, a book about children's identity, uh, she went all over the world photographing these portraits of these children in a moment of transition, we did it in color. This is work in progress. This was just a, a little taste uh, to see, to play with it, to see how the work will, uh, we don't know yet how that will be resolved. The other thing about this time is, what is it? It's possible, it's not so much the publication, but the creation of platforms. People are beginning to, to create their own platform and publication become like the centerpiece of those platforms and to communicate. So now BDP can collaborate with Remandus projects, uh, which we decide, okay, let's do, uh, in this idea or spreading idea, we decide, well, what is the best way to help a photographer or an artist? Well, let's put a, let's do the newsprint award. It's great because it's very cheap to print. You, you, you do a context. And because we had two platforms, they had a space there, and we are in New York, we are able to create, um, they are able to give them an exhibition, we print the newsprint, that we can send it everywhere, we can give it to, to, to the winner, uh, in this case was Dasna Capel, and sh she was able to take it to Brazil, and that creates momentum, it creates recognition, it creates work. So it was a great idea, but we, we did it twice, and then we couldn't anymore. The other place we use a lot uh, to express our work, to present the work, was the New York Book Fair. You know, about 15,000 people go through the weekend there. And so this is some of different years. This is Shiori with uh, our daughter, Anna. This is another. The other thing we start was working with local artists. We were concentrated in the local, in somebody here. It was very personal. It was um, it, it was people we like we, we, we like to work with, but it was you know we thought well let me promote it's almost like being a farmer let me promote what is here what is around us we, you know I don't need to bring somebody from far away I mean we, if there is a good relation of course we can do but uh, you know there is photographers around and um, uh, Jason for example he was doing his own zine by hand so we we worked together and you know of course we give them the table. You know, because sometimes we don't have, you know, we don't have, we were trying, we, we've been trying different methods in the book fair. You know, like first we, we did some books, but I, I think what it worked for us was to give the table to an artist, to, to a photographer, for them to, to fully express. And one thing though we do is we work with photographers, or we love, we, use, we love to work with photographers, you're going to see, which had a body of work on books. That they had took the media and they work with it. So. Going back, we, we got this assignment to do a poster. And we did a poster. It cost us $250 to print. But that poster got us two years lease at a place called Manac Contemporary in, in New Jersey. 
This is us packing our books to go, and this is the place. We went to that place, Shorty was pregnant, we needed more space, and they had a, a ground floor prime space. The guy said, oh, come tomorrow, meet with the, with the, with the head. I didn't want to go. Shorty says, you should go. I said, we, we, this guy going to be angry because we had no money. And we meet with him, and I'm sitting and say, well, you know, what do you want to do? What, show me what you do. I was so sure that nothing was going to happen that I didn't took any catalog. I didn't took anything. I said, you know, we usually take something to give to that person. I didn't took any. I wasn't going to give him anything. And, and you know, he just, you know, like it's only I took was this poster. That was it that we did. And he say, I love what you guys do, which I had no idea what it is. I mean, like I just, we do a newspaper. I say, how much do you have? I have, we don't have anything. I say, okay, I give you one year free rent. And like, then I understood, you know, you knew you are in the street, you're like, all right, one year free, we are so lucky. But then, you know, you understand the, the thing. He's trying to create this space. A doorman is standing here every day. It will cost him more money than it cost me doing it, just giving it the free. I, I cost him nothing. I, I had knowledge. I bring people, and he just need to recover what he gave me. He just need one guy to pass by and buy one of the apartments he's building around the center. And so I'm making money for him. So he told me. He told me clear, and I, and I respect him for this. I'm not giving you anything for free. What you have has value. And that was a great moment, because then I understood what we're doing have value. And, you, and that's the moment of recognition, when you know that. Because a lot of people give their work for free, you know, because they think, oh, they're doing you a favor. But if they don't doing you a favor. Do, if they, somebody's doing for you, there is value. So for two years, we were there, rent-free. They treat us great, fantastic. Um, and we work hard. Most of the time, I went there and I slept in the back of the room and turned off the light because I understood that's all he wanted. He wanted the lights to be on, you know. And so I went there with Sana and I let down to sleep because we haven't slept all night. And then we start doing shows, I slowly doing some exhibitions. So this is with um, Herman Erin Doringer. It's about, you know, he's a painter who appropriates the work on Kawara. On Kawara. Herman does some. Uh, some other appropriations. So we, you know, so friends that I met from ABC, and we put a show together. I put some of my drawings, and you know, we started understanding how a space work, how the dynamic, and, and and they get very excited. I mean, they, that that thing was happening. People were coming. People were coming from Brooklyn to come to a show. You know, it's far away. It's like it's it's, it's a journal square. You have to to go off. But it was a great opportunity to learn about space. I mean to learn, to research, what, what to create. And so think about, we, we come from a closet, from a newsprint, and so that's how I always go back to the image of, 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 of Michael Luther putting his ideas. It's just through the technology of the printing, we are making our argument. We put in the exhibitions. Then the next collaboration, the, next, the idea continues in which we work with publishers, with small independent publishers. So this is Son. And Song was founded by, together with, with, with other members, but one of the members was my ex-students, uh, Curtis Hamilton. So we give him a show, and then we ask him, we want to exhibit all the Song books. This is the opening. This is what's happening. So we will take one publisher and we put all the books there. Then Secretary Press, again, the independent publishers, we will take all their books, and we try to, the idea was to push for them as much as we could promote the books, give them the space, get the books out of the closet. This is Curtis. Curtis had a body of work on books. This is Jason. Uh, again, Jason came. He had a couple of zines, and he had some ideas. And we said, let's do it. Let's put these images. And so we did a whole show. And you know, again, this is a kind of artist that gives you 200%. You give them an opportunity, and they go for it completely. So it's a great collaboration. It's, you know, they, they were not, we worked together. And we got the Moodman going. And we were very lucky because at that time, ICP just moved there. The archive had moved there. So the curators were staying around. So you know, they, there was no other place to go. That was it. And all this is with help with friends, you know, people who help us to, to organize this. Uh, this is with Silent Faces, Joseph Delos Costa. We, 
I wanted to do a, something about propagation image. He appropriate images. And so we did a projection. People saw this glass was like the iPad. You know, they will pass and they will, it's just a projector in the back. In this process, I started with the book dummy and, and I always had this idea to finally do a book about my books. And, you know, we achieved that when we were there and, and we acquired the knowledge to be able to design, uh, to get the best quality, to, to get exactly what I wanted. And to that moment, I don't think we, we had get any book that we say, wow, this is, this is something. We are onto something. And I, and I think that was, this was the point. Even with our, with our daughter, with you know how much we were working, how tired we were, you know this is a 395-page uh, book, a catalog of uh, 105 maquettes, dummies of my own work, of you know more than 20 years of different interaction of work. It was the culmination. Uh, now it's 10 years of that process of of opening my archives, my closet, and and trying to find something else. The introduction is by Mayvin Hefferman. The fourth work is by Deidre Donahoe, which she tells the story about the book dummy. And I put the first dummy because the first dummy were, you know, my work on immigration. You know, very humble beginnings of, of photographing with a camera, black and white, put it in a book, send it out, trying to get a grant to continue. But if, again, it's the same process. This was a process to try to understand what happened to me, what happened, how do I end up here, how my mother ended up in this city. It was a very personal, and that's what I say it was very empty because when I disentangle all this mystery, which it was a mystery, it was very empty, and that's when the book, the books get, gave me a second win. So we close at Mana. This is my daughter, she's just playing, but, you know, and I ask uh, our friend, uh, Shoriana, we ask, Andrea Stern, you know, she had a space. She had the basement, who just remodelated, and I wanted to do a show of the book. So she said, oh, you know, you can create a pop-up here if you want. So, you know, very generous, we decide to do the show, and you know, we we found another space, which is a 36 Cooper Square, was a pop-up, and we opened, and this is how the show looked like. If you had any question at this point, you just feel free. So. You know, this is closing what it begins with the exhibition. Now it's, it's my work, it's developed. I think we have, uh, with the help of Shiori, the help of a lot of friends, we investigated this question, what a book was, and what a book was for me, what it does for me. And again, all these things are changing. You know, we're ending the, the Obama period. It's just a different, um, things change. It's a chaos come again, and in that chaos, you find opportunity to find uh, new expressions and new ideas to work with. This is all the print-on-demand work. This is the proofs coming from the printer. Then, Dog Days. We start collaborating with Andrea again, edited by John Lifter. Again, we propose go back to basic. It was a perfect project. Go back to, to the photography. Go, go back to photography. How can we, you know, not so much surrender. I, I'm, I'm, we're getting a little bit tired of the conversation around the book and the form and the thing, but what about the subject matter? What about the subject matter that is inside the print? Do we have the patience to look at the photograph again and to look what is the photograph about it and, and, and look at the photographer? Not so much, you know, book, 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 but you know, it sounds contradictory, but, uh, but it's, uh, after you explore that idea of the book, you have to go back to the subject matter. Right? Here is her, her archive, her exploration, her first photograph from the 90s to the beginning of 2000. We're beginning to just try to find the most simple materials we can in which they don't interfere with the images. We printed in Japan, you know, we just try to find materials that, that goes together with the work. And you know, this is the book. Again, it's a book we, are we feel, I mean, probably it's us saying, but we, we achieve a level that we haven't achieved before. From printing all these independent books, uh, slowly we move into a quality, into a sensibility that is closer to what we envision. We, you know, when you start, the contrasts are big. You have to be dramatic, but as, as you get experience, you know it because you begin to reduce the contrast. The contrast in design, the contrast in things, things are more subtle, more beautiful. The 
then uh, the place got redundant. Andrea fixed the, redo the, the basement. She allows us to stay there, she keep us. And we start collaborating a new project, a new space, a new catalog uh, that we're working on. So this exhibition was the opening of the uh, celebration of the book. So the, idea, the question is, what now? What, you know, and I think we are in that process. You know, because it's, by the way, it's not that you, you say, well, what did you go, you know, I understand that a, a space that you work is not forever. Things float all the time, things change, and things get recorded and fixed on time. So you, you, you know, enjoy it at that moment, because you know, the idea is not to have a bookstore for 30 years or for 40 years. The idea is to create the possibilities of collaborating with other people. And, you know, like what started with a show, a, a simple question about book, has become an environment uh, for our daughter to grow it. You know, that's more important for us to, something that feed us and, 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 you know, it help us to survive in New York, but it's also educate our daughter and help us to connect with other people. I think that's the most important part, I can say as a independent. So, you know, that's us in 2008. Uh, we're asking questions now. We are working uh, in a project with Andrea. We're part of a bigger project. We later will we'll, we'll come out more information. Now, that's BDP, and I, you know, I know a lot of students here. And I promise this is short. I know this is not this is not take on. I look. I say, well, you know, the, how is the tr what is the trend of the photo book now? You know, because that okay, that's what happened there. So I went back to my classes, you know, so this is, you can see it's from 2011. And, and the class is called The Book Now. And at that time, I put a list, the New York Art Book Fair, Little Brown Mushroom, the independent photo books. And again, all these platforms, which some of them disappear, all of them continue. And at that time, the bloggers had, uh, they were the ones who make the, the you know, the test maker. They, they will choose your book, your books. Are, and, you know, you had the book fairs, and all this is from 2011. You know, this excitement of these new fairs. I mean, photo book festival in Castle is still on. And I think the photo book festival is the place now to send your work, to send your book. You know, when I started sending books around, they people would tell me, don't send books, we want to see prints. Now there is, at least I can count, four book dummies award. When you get 20,000, 22,000 euros to publish your own book. And I think that's the place. I think is anybody, I, I will recommend, instead of self-publishing, I will recommend prepare a good dummy, a, learn to do a maquette, find a good collaboration, and apply because there are many. There are many now. This is, the landscape is, is big. I, I didn't put any list for you guys, but you know, Book Castle Festival is one. Arl, the Festival of Arl in France had an, is another. Uh, there is a new one coming in London. Uh, there is Upper Two, Paris Photo. So that's, a new landscape that didn't exist before, that's opportunity. And my conclusion was, you know, the Global Village, you know, these are the logos, all the people, we're still out there. This is how the landscape looked at that time. Everybody created a platform, we created a platform, and there was this collaboration between different spaces to create content. And it's similar to what happened with the technology, with the internet at the moment. So this is just, I just photographed this today. There is this great show is called uh, Photo Book Phenomenon. So this, this is a list in the show to say how to you know, choose the decide moment to make your book, become part of a community, use the internet, study the history, history of the media, make an object that is more than the sum of its parts. So this is happening, but it's more established. It's, it's not crazy. It's very, you know, it just go back to, to be more rigid, but it changed. 2008 was a moment in which it was chaos and things solidify now. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that wonderful history of the photo book and uh, we have time for a brief Q&A. Not so brief, we're, we have time. I'll pass around the mic. It doesn't make your voice louder, but it's important for the video, so please use it. Um, well, I thought that was so interesting 
to to uh, the way you presented that. Really, um, I was not aware of this whole history of the photo book and its resurgence. I had, I think, two questions. One is, during the same period that you're describing from sort of 2000, mid-2000 till today, uh, everyone has become a photographer, much more than before. I don't even know when that began, where the, 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 the phone is a camera. Uh, everyone's become a photographer, everyone, I should say everyone's taking pictures and uh, we're seeing so many of them um, and books are disappearing. Like those two things are happening at the same time and yet uh, what you're doing is uh, the putting photos together in a book is telling a story where these photos on their own, I just love to know how important it says here tell a story but how important that idea is today when 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 everyone is taking photographs but not necessarily thinking of story yeah i think i think because the book's resurgence comes that idea that it was disappearing you know that everybody said oh the object is disappearing and also created an effect in which we begin to pay attention to the other sense other than the visual um, so, you know, we wanted something more tactile, the print and all that. Um, but I think that the, the, the fundamental thing is this telling the story, is telling the story. And that's when I show you the ecosystem. I think we have more opportunity of telling the story, but the story is indirect. You had the direct story with the book, but you can use the other technology to, to feed that story to play with it. And, uh, it is more schizophrenic in a way, it's more separate, it's no focus in one place. But the story is fundamental. There is a, a photographer like Alex Sox, it's all storytelling. You know, he, he created his own publishing, his own place, uh, Little Brown Mushroom, you know, his own platform. And from that platform he was just, because this, he, will, he was very clever to also selling books, he was great for selling books because he will write, oh, it's Christmas night, I'm in love with my wife and I just spent all night creating this little zine for her. And so he tells you a nice paragraph and then the next day he put the zine on, the, on his website. It sold out completely because, uh, you know, there is a story uh, that he created and he does a couple of things like that. He, 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 he creates this narrative and he was a big advocate and I, and I am very advocate that is the story really the, the, that, is, that it matters at the end. Um, uh, to build on that question, you know, um, the idea that there are so many photographers out there or people who call themselves photographers and billions of images circulating on the internet, um, what, what is a good project for a photo book? I mean, we have all kinds of projects out there. Do you have any sense that you could articulate for us about when a project is worthy of a photo book treatment or not? It, de it depends of the, of, you know, you have to be aware of the right moment, you know, that's what this, you know, like right now, it's been happening for a while, is this, bec also the, there is the photo book, there is the photo book for festival, <coughs> which people had in mind, I'm, I'm, I want to I wanna win this award, so the design is, is very, very flashy, it's, you open it and it's, things start falling apart, falling out of it, you know, Shorty and I, we used to have a joke, we'd say, well, what is a good book? i say, anything you shake and nothing falls. <laughs> you know, like it is, it, it, it was a way, because that means not, tr in those books are very festival books in which you build that. I think we are in a good moment, I mean, that's my own impression, or my own taste, I think what we did with Dog Days. We, you know, you just, if you had a good story, you had good photograph, and you find material, you, you can do a book that you don't need all those tricks to make a photo book. You just rely on good photographs. Of course, they don't necessarily are festival books, are no, you know, not the books that even students don't gonna fall in love with it because there is no, the, like I say, the contrast. There is no, there is no the tricks, you know, the special effects. And, it, and it, there can be a relation with the cinema in a way, you know, you, you, people go see special effects. It's very easy to do now. So everybody adds in. So I am a, a great photo book, the designer shouldn't, shouldn't shine. There is the photography that should come up, I think. And I think it's a, right now it's a good moment. It takes years to create a good body of work. And 
you know, and, and you have to, to believe in it because probably very few people will notice because it's too, too much noise out there. But I think it's, it's worth, if you believe in the project, it's worthwhile putting it out there. And, and, you know, I don't know if that. One part of the conversation that, that we could say is still to come is, uh, where do you see uh, Book Dummy Press in five years? Let's say, what's the evolution of Book Dummy Press going that's, forward? That's the conversation we have. We don't, honestly, we don't know because it's, it's, it's and that's a great part. We, because we, we are, we doing this and we learn every day. We, we cannot set up, I mean, we, we can set a, a, um, a projection but it all depends of, of, of technology, of what are we doing, our own personal life, you know, how we, we manage our daughter to do the work. But for, la for us, it's very personal. You know, it's not, it's, it will be very easy. It's, we work with other people and, you know, it, it, we try to keep it also sustainable. It has to be sustainable because we, you know, we don't want to create a non-profit foundation or anything like that. that. That will be, in a way, easier because the perception will be different. But we try to keep it as a private enterprise. Uh, it makes us feel proud of ourselves to be able to make as little money we can make, to make a little bit, to, pr to provide a service, to, uh, to sell some books. And it changed year to year, you know, depends how. And, and we now it's like, where, where, what can we do? And, and so we have to steer our creativity. How can we create? How can we um, find that, that, that impulse to create new things, I think? And, uh, there is a great deal of financial risk in doing your large editions. Do you requ uh, ask that the photographers contribute to that risk? Um, well, the, the question is the Publishers in the '90s and the, and the 2000s, the reason uh, self-publishing become part of the of the game is a publisher will you were paying anyway to be able to do the book, and it, and it's, a, it's, it, it's you cannot take the you know I think maximum you can publish 500 books, you know, and you can deal with that. But that's what digital comes in. You can do fi 50 books, and it's still manageable in terms of income. Uh, to find somebody to pay for your book nowadays is very difficult. That, that is, you know, I, I don't think Aperture doesn't do for every, everybody. It, it is very difficult to find. Uh, only the festivals is the place that you may get. Or you had a big name and, you know, Mac Books uh, knows that they can, they can get their return. But books is very difficult to get any return from it. It's a very expensive, you know, it's like a friend of mine who publishes books all the time. He says, it's like buying a small car every time I publish a book. <laughs> You know, so but he said at least at least the book doesn't kill anyone or doesn't you know like it's just it's just publishing the whole thing. So it, it is yeah of course it, it is you know it, it is um, risky. I mean it's many ways to raise the money pre-sales and and you will recover somehow some some of the money, but I know everything. But the book is the book do well, uh, you know. Also you can do you know. But as you get an uh, uh, an award or you get into a festival then somebody can publish it, too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious uh, sort of how you choose things that you are going to work on uh, next or, like, who you're going to collaborate with and if there's ways there's students here and stuff, like, if there's ways for people to approach you with projects that they feel like would be good for um, for a collaboration or something? Yeah, no, right now, I mean, I, I'm happy to see work. Uh, right now, it's, 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 it's a difficult time because we are not looking, you know, it's a moment of transition. It's, it's the, like, one thing that is happening now, and I, I don't say this to discourage, is, is because those 10 years have passed by, it's a lot of self-publishing. It's a lot of big production. Like I say, it used to be rare, oh, you came with a book. But most people come now with a book. And so how do you, uh, it's just difficult to know how you manage that. So the only way we can think is you have to slow the times now. 
you have to slow, you know, that uh, it's fine that it's a lot of books, but I think for us it's taking longer to do a project, taking, taking uh, almost going back to, this, to the way it was, but with the next set of parameters, so, you know, the new festivals, the new place. And so I think now it's working slower. Uh, really take your time to make a good book. Think whether you really want it. Before, it just was about publishing. I think now, uh, you know, it, it's a good way to send the work out there, but, you know, I will, I will slow it down, I think. That's it. And so right now we don't, we don't have any rules of how to pick. I mean, it, it was very friendly, you know, like Jason, he stopped by, he bought a book, he showed me his scene, and we start working with him. You know, it, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's you want to collaborate with people you like, you respect, uh, yeah, that's all. And that happens, you know, unfortunately we don't have any, any formula for that. It's just a, a relationship with people. Thank you very much, Victor. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, uh,